the signal path. In this episode, we're going to take Logic 16 and Logic apart and see what's inside. So let's get started. All right, let's get started. Let's take the USB SX apart first. It's the easiest one to take apart. It only has a single screw. You can open that, it's a Phillips screw, and then the two halves uh, come apart, and the board in the middle is uh, just uh, sitting in there, and you have to just pull it out. So I put this aside. Uh, you can see the case is made of plastic, so I'm going to put this case away. Let's take a look at uh, the logic unit. Uh, both logic and logic 16 have four screws at the back. They're tiny little torque screws that you can take apart. And once you do that, this little plastic backplate comes out, comes away, and the circuit, the back of the circuit, is exposed. But the PCB itself is quite difficult to take out from this enclosure because the enclosure is built around the PCB and the same with this one. So in order to avoid damaging the PCB, I already have one of the PCBs that go in each of these units already. So we're going to take a look at them. So let me put the original units away. And now we can take a look and compare the USB logic and the uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the unit logic and the USB SX together. Interestingly enough, the design is very, very similar. Both of them use the uh, Cypress microcontroller USB host um, chip here. That uh, the, the model number is the CY7C68013A. All, both of these use the same part. This is a very popular component. And you can see, in the case of the logic, the 8-bit channels directly go, if I'm not mistaken, they go through surface mount resistors and then back onto the chip. So that's why this guy doesn't have any input protection. So if you put in anything more than 5 volts or 6 volts, you're going to damage this chip because this chip is 5 volt tolerant, but it cannot handle anything more than that. So that's also, you can also see that there is no really input buffer implemented on this board because directly the inputs directly go to the microcontroller and from the microcontroller directly to the USB port. The back of it, uh, you can only see some uh, copper port that's uh, essentially, I think, is just a uh, ground plane. Now, if I were to compare this with the one that uh, comes with um, from USB, it uses exactly the same chip. Uh, I believe it uses the same crystal oscillator, uh, same voltage regulator, and this guy has a 3.3 volt. A 5 volt and ground on the side as well so you can power maybe a small circuit with it. It can be convenient um, it would be nice if the logic uh, components, the logic uh, series had the same feature. Interestingly enough this one's labeled USB ZX and the ZX product is much more expensive than the SX product so I wonder what the difference is especially because from the outside they look very very similar so if anybody knows a way to convert one to the other uh, let me know. I'd be uh, interested to see uh, if that can be done. Um, this one also has, um, as you can see at the input, a bunch of surface mount series resistor that goes directly to the to the chip. So it, that provides some level of protection. This is uh, particularly important for this unit because this unit uh, is able to uh, produce outputs as well as as read them. So it can be a function generator. The logic is capable of doing that but not natively through the software that's distributed you're going to have to write your own uh, little thing in the SDK that's provided then you can put some outputs on it uh, they're saying that they may work on it at some point and produce something that you can have a graphic uh, user interface and do that that'd be, uh, that'd be very nice it would increase the value of this uh, significantly so moving on to uh, Logic 16 this thing is, uh, is incredible uh, let's take a closer look. Again, it's using the same uh, Cypress semiconductor uh, part, the same microcontroller and USB controller. But on top of that, now we have, let me see if I can get this on camera, a Xilinx Spartan FPGA there as well. And this guy sits in between the channels and the microcontroller. So this gives us an opportunity here. This chip allows you to buffer some data in it it will collect the data from here, buffer it, and then have a handshaking protocol, some communication protocol with this guy and this guy to the computer. So if the computer is not ready to receive data, this guy will buffer it. And then when the computer is available to read chunks of data, it will send everything to back to the computer. Uh, there is, I believe, a, a DC-DC converter voltage regulator here. I've checked these test points. 
uh, this one's T3, T2, and T1. And T2 is at 1.2 volts, and T3 is at 3.3 volts. So this voltage regulator gives you uh, those two voltages. And I believe, I think the way uh, this is working is that when you select the the voltage range you want to use, something inside here switches the voltage so that you can have a different threshold uh, when detecting the bits that are coming in. This uh, Xilinx Spartan is supposed to work down to 1.2 volt uh, IOs and is all the way compatible to 5 volt IOs. That's why this guy can have can have such a wide range of uh, uh, detection. He can detect a, 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 a whole bunch of power supply voltages. Uh, this entire front end here looks to be the input protection circuit. So because all this input protection circuit has been added, the input impedance of each of these pins has been lowered to 180 kilo ohms. In the original logic, the input impedance of these pins were, was about a 1 mega ohm. That's not a big deal, but you just have to keep that in mind that when you connect something to this pin, it's going to now have 180, oh, 180 kilo ohms along about 7 picofarads uh, connected to those pins. On this side is the little LED. Uh, and this and this particular one is a little bit crooked, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so this guy is the uh, the one that's flashing from underneath the case. Now, something interesting is that uh, the layout of this may look strange at first glance. You would think, well, why isn't this FPGA here in the center? Why would you kind of squish it here in the corner and have all this empty space? The reason for that is quite subtle. I think that's because of the way these uh, pins work. So this is pin number one, uh, this is the channel zero, and this is all the way at the end, this is uh, the last channel, channel 15. So, so if all the channels are enabled at the same time, the sampling rate is reduced to 12 and a half megahertz, we know that from the previous video. So therefore, the timing constraint on this pin here is fairly relaxed because we know that this guy is only active when 12.5 megahertz is active. But this pin, um, this pin right here, this pin is supposed to work at 100 mega samples per second, up to 25 megahertz of um, uh, on and off. So this pin has to be much closer to the FPGA in order for the signal uh, not to degrade before it reaches the uh, the threshold, the, the the detection inside the FPGA. So what he's done is that not only has he equalized the length of these PCB traces by snaking them like this, he's shifted the FPGA to the left so that would allow the, the path between this pin and the FPGA to be the shortest possible and as you move along this way the timing is relaxed so you can have longer and longer traces. It would have been cool if he had another FPGA down here then you could have had uh, highest sampling on either side of the board but that would have increased the cost and complexity significantly. The back of this board is also, uh, there's no, there are no components at the back. And you can see some more traces between the FPGA and the, uh, the Cypress microcontroller that is, uh, that is at the top. Uh, another interesting thing is that there is, a, I believe that this it must be a programming JTAG uh, for the Xilinx FPGA, especially because I can see traces going directly to the FPGA. So you could program this guy uh, using these pins here. I wouldn't recommend that. Because I don't know what software is running in here or what he has programmed into this. Uh, you could, I guess, uh, potentially play around with it and see what happens, but do it at your own risk. Also, open these at your own risk. Apparently, I tried opening one of them and they're quite difficult to take these boards out of. Um, let's see what else is interesting around here. Oh yeah, there's another cool thing here is that I've noticed that uh, both Logic 16 and Logic are protected by fuses. So there's a fuse here in case something happens. to protect, uh, I guess, either the board or the computer, most likely the computer, even though the USB port on the computer has uh, current protection already. But what is interesting is that uh, the original logic is also equipped with it, and it has one fuse here and also one fuse here. Now, if you look at the, uh, the USB SX, it doesn't seem to have a fuse, so it doesn't seem to have the same input, uh, same power protection as the Logic series does. Yet again goes to show uh, the amount of detail uh, that the, the, the time they've spent to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. Uh, I, I think this, this board is great. I see no extra pieces of solder anywhere. The soldering is fantastic. The quality of the board is great. Um, it is it's really good. And actually if you look here, it seems like it says uh, it's Logic 16 SMB2. This must be, I think, probably the second revision of this board. And, and I believe this video and the previous video are the first reviews of this unit. So I must have one of the very early, uh, early production units. 
uh, again quite quite happy with the design I think it's a uh, uh, it's very well thought out and you can see how the case is essentially built around this and if I put it on top there's uh, very very little uh, very very little space uh, that's not used inside the case so overall um, very very nice very happy with it the board uh, the design is, uh, is quite nice uh, if you have any questions or if you um, have any suggestions if you'd like to see something else let me know and I'd be more than happy to uh, either reply to you or make another little video highly recommended product uh, write them an email they'd be more than happy to talk to you uh, thumbs up